Did you know that the average American goes through more than 100 rolls of toilet paper every year? That's a lot of rolls. And with that much demand, it's no wonder the toilet paper industry rakes in a staggering $100 billion worldwide. But have you ever wondered how they actually make toilet paper? Well, it all starts with collecting wood. Specialized machines called timber harvesters do the job. These heavy-duty machines weigh a whopping 18 tons and are like the superheroes of the forest gathering up the wood needed for making toilet paper. So next time you're using a roll, just think about the journey it took from the forest to your bathroom. The timber harvester is a true multitasker. It can chop down trees, remove their branches, and slice up the trunks in less than a minute. It's like watching a forest superhero in action. But here's the interesting part. The trees it targets aren't the straight and sturdy ones you'd use for furniture. The harvester goes for the bad wood, the crooked or imperfect trunks that wouldn't make the cut for anything else but toilet paper. Once the harvester has done its job, thousands of tree trunks end up at a processing site where they're ready to become pulp, the essential ingredient for paper and toilet paper. But before that can happen, the wood needs to be turned into chips. Enter the wood chipper, a massive machine that cuts the wood into uniform pieces. Picture this, giant drums waiting eagerly at the end of a shaft, ready to receive the wood and turn it into the raw material for all those rolls of toilet paper you go through every year. It's a giant operation indeed. Once the wood has been chipped into uniform pieces, it's time for the next step in the toilet paper making adventure. Huge drums take on the task of debarking the wood, stripping away the outer layer while keeping as much wood intact as possible. After this, the wood gets a thorough cleaning with a refreshing water bath, flushing out any pesky stones or sand that might have hitched a ride on the logs. But before moving forward, there's one more important checkpoint, the metal detector. This handy device scans the wood for any stray nails or screws that could wreak havoc on the machinery later on. It's like a safety net, ensuring smooth sailing through the rest of the production process. Now comes the satisfying part. The wood chips are sliced and diced by giant rotating knives, turning them into tiny pieces ready for the next phase. These wood chips travel along a conveyor belt forming towering stockpiles as they await their transformation into the pulp that will become your trusty roll of toilet paper. But wait, there's more! To break down the wood fibers even further, they take a chemical bath in colossal industrial tanks known as decomposers. These tanks work their magic, cooking the wood chips until they're transformed into the pulp. That's the heart and soul of every roll of toilet paper. Once the wood chips have been cooked in the decomposers for up to three hours, most of the moisture in them evaporates. Initially, wood chips are about 50% water. But after cooking, they're transformed into a mixture containing around 25 tons of cellulose fibers, lignin, which holds the fibers together. From each batch, cooked approximately 15 tons of usable fiber, known as pulp, are obtained. Now, on to the other raw material used for making toilet paper, recycled paper. Unlike wood, obtaining recycled paper isn't as straightforward. It involves a machine called a sorter, which does the job of separating the usable paper from the junk. Here's how it works. Junk is loaded into the machine and travels along a conveyor belt. The sorter automatically removes rubbish, cardboard, and plastic. First, a sieve removes large debris and cardboard, then near-infrared sensors are used to separate the recycled paper from the junk. When a sensor detects cardboard or other unwanted materials, a blast of air sends them off the conveyor belt. This efficient machine can sort through a whopping 400 tons of recycled paper every day. So once sorted, the recycled paper goes through a giant washing machine passing through 14 stations to ensure it's clean and ready to be used again for making new paper products. It's a labor-intensive process, but surprisingly, it's more environmentally friendly than using wood for pulp, 
So while it may sound like a lot of work, it's worth it for the planet. Once the recycled paper has been broken down into pulp, it undergoes a series of steps to ensure it's clean and ready for paper production. First up is the screening process, where a device called the sieve eliminates tiny waste particles from the pulp. Then comes the fine cleaning stage, using centrifugation to separate heavy waste particles like sand or splinters, which sink to the bottom. Next, the pulp undergoes dinking by washing it with soap. This process causes the color particles in the ink to attach to foam, which is skimmed off, leaving behind clean pulp. However, the pulp at this stage has a sludge-like appearance, so it's treated with bleach and diluted with water to make it more suitable for paper production. Now, with both wood and recycled paper pulp ready, it's time for the paper-making process to begin. Enter the paper machine, a massive 120-meter-long beast that churns out solid paper in four steps. First, the prepared pulp is fed onto a large mesh screen or belt called a fora wire. As the pulp moves along the wire, water drains through, leaving a layer of intertwined fibers on top. Ever wondered how a simple sheet of paper turns into the beloved toilet paper? Well, it all goes down in a fascinating machine called the toilet paper roller. Although not as massive as the paper machine, measuring 80 meters long, it's still an impressive contraption, churning out about 500,000 rolls every day. Here's how it works. Multiple large jumbo reels of paper are unwound simultaneously, layering their paper atop one another. The number of layers depends on whether the toilet paper is three-ply or two-ply. Then, different patterns are printed onto the paper, depending on the brand. Next up is micro-embossing, which gives toilet paper its signature dotted texture. This not only adds volume, but also ensures a soft and comfortable feel for consumers. Finally, the paper is rolled onto incoming cardboard rolls. These rolls are slightly larger than what you might be used to, and are then cut into smaller rolls of various sizes, tailored to meet the specific demands of the market, whether it's standard toilet roll sizes or household towel rolls. It's a finely tuned process that transforms plain paper into the essential product we rely on every day. Additionally, machinery and processes involved in creating the finished paper undergo testing for various qualities such as stretch. This rigorous quality control ensures that the paper meets the desired standards before it reaches consumers. If you found this journey through the production of toilet paper fascinating, consider subscribing to Factorify, where we explore the intricacies of various manufacturing processes. Stay tuned for more captivating content on how everyday items are made.